Hi everybody, this is Coach Joe and today we're going to be talking about a kind of interesting topic a little away from high performance but a very important one for people starting their active journey or currently in one. We're going to talk a little bit about health versus fitness. First one we're going to talk about is health. All right, health, the state of being free from injury or disease. That's the basic definition. Now think for a moment of somebody that you think of by that definition as healthy. Okay, put that person in your head. All right. Let's jump to fitness. What's the definition of fitness? The quality of being suitable to fulfill a particular role or task. Fitness is essentially that. It's the condition of being physically, in this definition, fit and healthy. Now, I don't really like that one, but I want to change that definition a bit. First, let's take the word fit out of there because you can't use fitness in its own definition. So remove fit. And we're saying fitness might be different from health, so let's remove health. And we're left with this, the condition of being physically what? Prepared. Now, I asked you to do this with health. I want you to think of somebody who personifies the definition of fit. Now let's leave those aside and talk a little about why this difference is important. To be healthy, one needs a certain amount of fitness. But to be fit, you don't necessarily have to be healthy. Now, some people are gonna get all over that, but I'm telling you, it's important to understand that as a statement. But why does all this matter overall again? It's really important because one of these is really easy to achieve and one of these is quite difficult to achieve. And if you're on a journey for health and fitness or health or fitness, you need to know which one is which. So let me ask you that. Which one is easier to achieve, health or fitness? Okay, so let's look at health versus fitness together now on a curve, all right? Now, a lot of people think I've graphed out here the basic curve that shows you the line that most people think health and fitness exist on and that is as I get fitter I get healthier so we've got health over here on the y-axis fitness on the x-axis and obviously training over time some level of exercise activity health and fitness activities if you take a look at this we should automatically assume okay down at the bottom here if I've got poor fitness I've got poor health right poor fit we move up a little bit and I think I've got good fitness well I've got pretty good health that's pretty correct, that's pretty accurate. Then when we look up at the top here, you think, wow, super fit must be super healthy. And that's the point we're trying to make today is that's not always the case. And most people don't realize that what this actually looks like, this curve is, it kind of drops off after somewhere between having good fitness and super fitness, health starts changing. And we notice that your health doesn't just keep getting better because you get fitter. The more you're training your body, the more you're doing actually puts a lot of stress on your body and there's really specific things to understand about that. Because today we're talking about if I got a health goal or a fitness goal, what's the difference? And so what we see over time, if you get super fit, super fit, I'm not just talking about kind of fit, some of our most elite athletes, you can actually start to see that a very super fit person shows many of the poor health attributes of somebody that's poorly fit. And so we're gonna take a look at that intersecting. And what do I mean specifically? Let's look at some of the things that the poorly fit and unhealthy and the super fit and also partially unhealthy actually share. Number one, they both have higher incidence of soft tissue injury risk. One, the poorly fit get all kinds of problems, back pain, knee pains, other shoulder pains, very easily because the body can't handle much activity, sitting too long, whatever it is. Elite athletes and super fit people are constantly injured. So you say, oh yeah, well one chose to be do that and so that makes it okay. But the body's response is not okay to injury. It's still an unhealthy state. Second, upper respiratory tract disorders. We all just came through this terrible pandemic, cold, flus, fevers, and all my super fit friends and unhealthy friends seem to get sick a little more than some of the others. If you know a really, really super fit, high level endurance athlete, you probably also know somebody who gets a lot of little niggly colds and flus because they're constantly overtraining. Chronic inflammation. Everybody's talking about inflammation. I'll let you guys have that conversation, but we know both ranges of the spectrum display that. Uh, often unfavorable blood lipid profile. Super fit don't always have everything perfect on their blood tests either. Uh, hormonal imbalances, poor sleep, unhealthy eating habits, elevated cortisol, that's the big stress one, both seen at both le levels of the spectrum. And also, this is a really important part, Super fit, unhealthy people, unfit, high susceptibility to mental stress, disorders, anxieties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But these are things that both unhealthy and poor fit people and super fit people 
could be unhealthy display. So now let's put a comparison together to you understand. I think go back to what I asked. Picture your healthy person, picture your fit person. All right. Let's take a look at this example here with what I call the racehorse and the workhorse. These are relevant to Leela. There's one of our Leela drivers, Sandy Stuvik out of uh, the Asia G uh, GT series. That's his car. He's got the Porsche uh, 911 GT3 series car. Incredible high speed machine. And then on the right is a workhorse. And that's actually my 1996 Land Rover Defender. So let's do a little comparison of these. And I want you to think of your healthy versus your fitness person. The healthy being the workhorse, the fitness being the high performance. So look at the specs on these cars. One of them cost 450,000 US dollars just to get going. The other one, I bought it for 6K. High um, horsepower, 520 versus up to 200. Mine doesn't hit 200 anymore, but one's built for real performance. Top speed, 330 kilometers an hour versus maybe 130 kilometers an hour downhill. Average kilometers of use per year, very limited versus very durable. Average hours per year, very limited very durable. Mechanical team, it takes six doctors, oops, sorry, it takes six mechanics just to take care of that one high performance car. Well, ask yourself, how many high performance people are on the medical team of an elite athlete? The average person, like my truck, just needs somebody to keep things going. One, I have one great mechanic, works well. Maintenance cost per year, that car is designed to perform incredible things, but it's not gonna last very long where my truck is not designed to do anything too great, but it's doing it for a very long time. In order to be healthy, health is about maintenance, not top performance. Moderation and consistency are the key, and I know you know that. And this is the most important two points. If you're on a healthy journey, you do not have to start getting caught in the road that you need to do more, you need to go faster. There is a whole market out there in the fitness industry filled with fitness obsessed people who live and die by the no pain, no gain moniker. And that's not what makes health. If you're going to find a healthy journey, find yourself a trainer who has moderation as a mindset. They're not looking to start you here, grow you here, end up here. It's really important to understand it takes very little to be healthy. Health versus fitness, which one is easy to achieve? Health. So to wrap it up, what does a healthy program look like? I'm not gonna talk about fitness programs. There's a million trainers in the world. And again, I've, I've been one of these guys. I know these people. We're obsessed with fitness, we live with pain, and we put ourselves through a lot that the average person doesn't. So let's take a look at what it takes to be healthy. Healthy program starts with walking. You never have to run, ever. You don't need to progress to running. If you want to, that's fine. Walking is enough cardiovascular activity to create the most important scenario your body needs, circulation. And you don't have to do it for an hour. For health benefits, 15 to 20 minutes, even as little as 10 twice a day is enough on a daily or every other day or basis to start seeing healthy changes. Next thing you need is light, light stretching, movement. You watch all the old aunties and uncles, you go to China or anything like that, and you see them doing those Tai Chi and body clapping and stretches, there's a reason. Your joints need movement, all right? Circulation, you need. Joints need movement. Simple stretching. You don't have to enroll in a yoga class. You don't have to learn how to stretch hard. You don't have to grimace when you're stretching. You have to move the joint through its range of motion and do that multiple times a day. A few minutes each day, most important time, as soon as you wake up and before you go to bed. When you wake up, you carry stiffness with you. Release it. Just have a two to three minute routine where you go through those motions. Before you go to bed, you're taking tightness with you. Release it. The last thing, you need some level of basic body weight strength. There are a million people out there who have great uh, programs online from push-ups to sit-ups to partial chins, a bit of pull, a bit of squat, using your body two to three times a week in a basic home circuit. And these things combined, a bit of cardiovascular for circulation, a bit of stretching for range of motion, a bit of strength to keep your muscles toned, is enough to change from an inactive or a low level of health to a moderate level of health. And it's a starting point. And on that starting point, if you get to that level and you decide, I've done the walking, I'd like to go for a run, no problem. I want a little bit more fitness for a task I'm interested in now, no problem. But understand, you don't have to go to extremes to be healthy because the two have a very different outcome and desire. So that's good luck. Reach out, ask some questions, subscribe and like, make your comments, good or bad. We'll take a shot at answering them. And as always, let's keep moving forward.